United States. Grilling crowds everywhere they go. They're the six best monster trucks in the world. And today, the United States Hot Rod Association has brought them to Albany, New York, to the Knickerbocker Arena. And you're going to thrill to all the action of the Monster Truck Challenge here on ESPN, the Total Sports Network. Arena in New York State Capitol, the stars of the U.S. Hot Rod Association's Monster Truck Challenge Series, affectionately known as the six best monster trucks in the world, are preparing for battle. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to Albany, New York. I say welcome back because, as you know, we've paid Albany a visit once before on Monster Truck Challenge Series. But these fans up here can't get enough of the monster trucks, so we're back for some more. The last time we were in Albany, David Morris and the Equalizer stole the show. Morris went from fast qualifier to champion that day, and he's at it again this time. Equalizer turned in the fastest qualifying time of 2.42 seconds. Just four thousandths of a second behind is brand new high-tech car stomping Bigfoot 10 with Dan Runty at the wheel. So it looks like it could be, could be a Bigfoot Equalizer final, but they'll have to get by the other four fastest monster trucks in the world. All right, let's go trackside. Standing by is our Joe Lowe. Thank you, Ken. And as you can see, our monster trucks are not the only thing to watch here tonight in Albany. Well, the lineup stands this way. Equalizer takes on the Carolina Crusher. It's Barefoot against the Gravedigger and Bigfoot against Torrance as we line up for our first round of Monster Truck Challenge. Gary Porter of Carolina Crusher and David Morris of the Equalizer. Here's Jim Clark with David. David Morris of the Equalizer with a qualifying time of 2.42 seconds, the fastest qualifying time. What's it like out there, David? Well, look, the track, the side I ran in the, the yellow lane seems like it's going to be better than the, the what's the right lane is the blue lane. One of them's giving us a little bit more air, so I tried hard to get the fastest qualifying time so I can keep that lane all night and uh, put the other guy, whoever I'm running, in the bad lane, which is going to hopefully put him in the air and put me to the finish line. What do you think is causing the difference in the two lanes? There's a there's a big difference in the, the starting ramps down there on the cars. One of them's a lot more bulkier than the other one, and it just, the, the right lane, the blue lane, is going to be the uh, air shot, and the uh, left lane, which is the yellow lane, is going to be more lower to the cars. The guy that's holding all the marbles right now on the Monster Truck Tour, David Morris and the Equalizer. But Gary Porter, the Lone Wolf, we'll have an interview with Gary later on in the show. He's set to go out of Wadesboro, North Carolina. Can he shut down the Equalizer? Let's go trackside and find out as we line them up for round number one. Their stage, waiting for the green light. There we go. David Morris going high, the crusher staying low, and I can't tell which one did it. Which one went across that finish line first? The United States Hot Rod Association has said that Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher crossed the finish line first. David Morris getting launched and going high, and this is how to do it. The blue lane, the lane that David Morris didn't want to be in, but Gary Porter was able to manipulate it. A nice run as he goes across that finish line and moves on to round number two of our Monster Truck Challenge. Now, in slow motion, both Gary Porter with a good hole shot. And he stays low, equalizers launched high, and a full 
tire length lead and the win for Carolina Crusher. The Grave Digger is staging for our next matchup, and Lyle Hancock says, watch out, a close night's coming up in all races. Well, you get all, all six of these trucks today ran within a tenth of each other. I mean, there's very little room for human error there. When you're running that close, that, that competitive, it makes the sport, you know, real interesting as far as, you know, you got to be able to cut a good light, you know, it's anticipation when it's going to come on. Sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. So, you know, something that we try to do, and um, that's, that's the brakes of racing. And Lyle Hancock of the Grave Digger better be on his toes tonight because his competition definitely will be. The veteran Fred Schaefer in Barefoot. We asked Fred if there was a difference between the lanes here tonight. Uh, track's quite a bit different. Uh, we got the right lane is, is pretty bad. That's the lane I qualified in. The left lane is a lot smoother. Uh, quite a bit different in lanes tonight. Now, you're operating with a new kind of clutch. Can you tell us about that? Well, it's a slipper clutch. It's what uh, a lot of the pullers are using and uh, drag racers and stuff. Okay, you looked a little unhappy when you came off the course. What was the reason? Well, uh, the, the ramps is quite a bit different out there, and, and I, we let them know earlier, and they couldn't do anything about it. There's daylight and dark difference between the ramps. It makes the truck want to fly straight up and down. Uh, they couldn't change the ramps in time. Now, Fred, Gary Porter beat the odds here tonight. Let's see what happens between Grave Digger and Barefoot. High-flying action. Grave Diggers have their Barefoot picks up the win. The U.S. Hot Rod Association has to time every one of these matchups. They are so close here at the Knickerbocker Arena. But Barefoot, a decided winner in this one. And look, you saw the Grave Digger raise up first. He had the whole shot. But Barefoot just leaps high, much higher than Equalizer did. But he gets across that finish line first. That's what horsepower will do for you. And Barefoot gets that win. Driving style is everything, and Fred Schaefer is dialed in here tonight. He starts, approaches that ramp flawlessly. Now watch what happens here. This is what launched the equalizer. It does the same thing to Barefoot, but he had the horsepower behind him, and a rough landing. We land on one, two, three, all four tires going different ways. Not a pretty win, but a win all the same for Barefoot, and Fred Schaefer, he advances to round number two. Our next matchup between Taurus and Bigfoot. Dan Rutschie driving Bigfoot 10, Jackie Wilman and Taurus. No love lost here. As we get set to go, Dan Rutschie driving the Bigfoot 10. This is the blue Ford. And Jackie Wilman in the Chevy, the 1991 world champion Taurus. We're set to go. Bigfoot and Taurus, who's it going to be? Here we go. We'll find out moments from now. Could you tell, watching that race, could you honestly tell which one crossed the finish line first? Was it Taurus or Bigfoot? The ISO cam picks up Taurus. Jackie Wilman knows how to drive. He's dialed in on this blue lane. And the U.S. Hot Rod Association has given the win officially to Jackie Wilman and Taurus. All night long, you've been hearing these drivers talk about the difference in lanes. This one cost Bigfoot a win. They're side by side going into the ramp. The yellow lane launches Bigfoot. Jackie Wilman stays low in the blue lane. And there you can see that's all she wrote. Almost a half truck lead and the win for Jackie Wilman and Taurus. And that's it for round number one of our Monster Truck Challenge can. Well, Gary Porter and Jackie Wilman Jr. made sure that there would be no equalizer Bigfoot showdown. But as racing fans know, anything can happen when the six best monster trucks in the world get together. And we're going to have more racing action from the Knickerbocker Arena in Albany, New York. But first, some very important messages from some very important people, our sponsors. The most awesome monster truck of them all, Grave Digger. Now, Grave 
Digger the video brings monster truck thrills into your living room. See Grave Digger smashing, smashing, turning piles of cars into piles of pancakes. You'll go inside, you'll go underneath, you'll meet the men who built the ultimate machine. Grave Digger the video. You're in trouble. Get your credit card ready because when it's your time to go, it is your time. The ultimate home monster truck video. Grave Digger the video. Credit card and order your copy of Grave Digger the video only $19.95 plus shipping. Call 1 800 352 7700. Don't miss the special monster truck offer. Call 1 800 352 7700 before it's too late. Welcome back, everybody, to Monster Truck Challenge. I'm Ken Brew. Now, before we get to the racing in Albany, New York, at the Knickerbocker Arena, we want to chat a little bit with a guy that's been around for seven years in monster truck racing. He races the big old Chevy behind me with a big Chevy engine. I speak of Gary Porter. Gary, thank you for taking time out and being with us today. Thank you. You know, I love you know, running for the United States Hot Rod Association. You know, they have some real strong competition here today. Gary, big question first. Where does the, where does the title Lone Wolf come from? Well, I guess because I travel on the road a lot by myself, you know, I have a terrific crew, you know, that stays at home at the shop when I leave. But, you know, I do all the traveling, the tire changing, and most of the work on the road on the truck myself. So you're a, you're a lonely guy, right? Right. You know, I get to meet a lot of people, you know, going up and down the road, you know, talking to truck drivers on the CB. And, you know, when we get to an event, you know, a lot of friends are there, and we help one another. And, you know, I do actually most of the driving and traveling by myself. Sounds like you like being on the road. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, you know, traveling a lot, seeing a lot of the country, and meeting a lot of nice people. Now, last year was a disappointing year, I know, for, for the Carolina Crusher and for Gary Porter, not finishing as high in the standings as you would have liked. Tell me about 1992. What have you done to make sure 1991 doesn't happen all over again? Well, we've changed motors in the truck. Uh, you know, we're making more power now. You know, we are up in the point standing more now this time than we were last year. And, uh, you know, I've even put a bigger motor in the truck, and hopefully, you know, I can keep on progressing to take a points championship. Is it difficult for kind of like a one-man band or a two-man band here to compete with the big dollar guys like Bigfoot and Barefoot? Yeah, they're a tough competition, but, you know, it's really, I guess, self-satisfying when you go out and you beat the guys that have unlimited funds, and, you know, it's really, you know, self-satisfying when you do that. So that answers the obvious question. Anytime you can knock off a barefoot or a bigfoot, it makes the day all the more worthwhile, doesn't it? Right. You know, them, Tars, you know, Grave Digger, any of the top name trucks, you know, anytime you go out and beat them, you know, you feel like you have done your homework that week. Gary, who do you see as being the favorite, if there is indeed a favorite, for the World Championship this year? Well, right now, Equalizer, he's really... You know, it has ever, all his competitors walking around, you know, scratching their head, wondering what he's doing. And the way he's going, I think he'll win the points championship, maybe. Well, Gary, I know this is a busy time of the day. We appreciate you taking time out and chatting with us. Well, thank you for coming out and filming the event, and maybe we'll see you down the road at another one someday. I hope so. Gary Porter. Now, when we come back, we'll go back to Albany, New York, and the Knickerbocker Arena, and see if Mr. Porter can drive the Carolina Crusher to victory when Monster Truck Challenge continues in just a moment. Welcome back. You're dialed in to Monster Truck Challenge. We're all set for more racing action from Albany, New York. Let's set the stage. We've got Gary Porter and Carolina Crusher tangling with another veteran, Fred Schaefer in barefoot. Now, Crusher is riding high after a first-round win over the Red Hot Equalizer. Barefoot got to round two with a win over his old nemesis, Gravedigger. Our other semifinal matchup pits Gravedigger with Lyle Hancock at the wheel against Jackie Wilman and Torres. Now, Digger is back as fast loser from round one. Torres stopped Bigfoot in his tracks to get to the semis. Once again, let's take you to racing action in Albany, New York. Here's Joe Lowe. A house full of happy campers here at the Knickerbocker Arena as we get set with Carolina Crusher and Barefoot. One guy that's not happy is David Morris, and Jim Clark is with him. And you're not very happy. Tell us about it. No, uh, we had the first two races, we had a little trouble down here on the starting line and communication between uh, starters. And I don't think Barefoot was ready for his run, and I wasn't ready for mine. And when Crusher uh, took off, well, 
that he I had to take off too so I delayed my my time enough so we got bumped out of it and we'll just have to come back and try to win again okay you're gonna try to protest at all to uh, the timings well it it's recorded now so there's nothing we can do about it how do you feel about it how do you feel well, I'm not too happy about it right now I'm, I feel sorry for these guys when I come back out again. What are you going to do to them? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stomp them worse than I have. Oh, boy, I knew we'd get that smile back. David Morris of the Equalizer looking to do some stomping. It'll be another day, though, Dave. Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, and Brent Schaefer barefoot. Two Chevys on the line. Brent Schaefer and Barefoot managed to stay low that run and pick up the win. The win goes to Barefoot. He stays low in the lane that everybody has had trouble in so far tonight. He's found a sweet spot in the yellow lane. The slow-mo cam picks him up. Gary Porter and Carolina Crusher actually got off the line first, but Barefoot powers his way through. And he's across that finish line first. He's going to our finals. He'll be in the championship run. So Fred Schaefer has been able to take the bad lane. He's been stuck there twice so far here in Albany and turn it around and turn it into a winning situation. Moves a little bit to the right. That's his sweet spot. The horsepower does it all. He sails over the cars, picks up points, and goes to the championship. Now, lane choice has been a consideration and something everybody's been talking about. Our next matchup between Gravedigger and Taurus, Lyle Hancock, what are your thoughts on this situation between the blue lane and the yellow lane? At first, I thought it was going to want to run the left lane pretty much all much. Um, it's got a little bit of ramp to it. The right one seems to be getting a little bit of air, but as the night's going on, the trucks are running on, the ramps are starting to change on there. Um, the left lane right now happens to be getting a little more air than the right lane, and when you're up in the air, you're not going forward. Um, next round, I picked, uh, I got a run with Taurus, and uh, Taurus took the right lane, which has not been the favorite lane for tonight. So it's going to put me in what started out to be the favorite lane. Now we'll see what we can do with it. Now we know Barefoot is going to be in the championship, but is he going to be against the Gravedigger or Taurus? We'll find out moments from now. The red headlights are up and a thumbs up from Gravedigger. There we go. I couldn't tell. I just could not tell. It looked as though Gravedigger had the lead. Taurus sailed from behind at the finish line. It was anybody's race, and that's why the United States Hot Rod Association has those cameras to review it and check one more time. The drivers don't know. We'll find out as they find out. Digger in the lead here, but Taurus, I don't know where he gets the horsepower in the air, but he does, and the win goes to Jackie Wilman and Taurus as he defeats the Grave Digger in a photo finish, just inches separate the two here in Albany. Now, Jackie Wilman is one of the best drivers on the tour. He's great off the line, reaction time is great, and how he can find a sweet spot on the ramp is anybody's guess, but he does it week in and week out. Jackie Wilman piloting the Taurus Monster Truck to our championship in Albany. As the action continues, these incredible monsters just keep on going. Jackie Wilman will face Barefoot in our Monster Final. You know, in the Monster Truck Challenge Series, everybody likes to win. It doesn't matter who they beat, as long as they get to the winner's circle. We'll take a look at what we have now in the finals. You've got Taurus and Jack Wilman Jr. He'd like nothing better than to beat Fred Schaefer. And you ask Schaefer, he'll tell you his big nemesis, and the guy he likes to beat the most is Taurus and Jack Wilman Jr. Somebody is going to leave Albany, New York, very satisfied. We'll find who that is when Monster Truck Challenge continues in just a moment. everybody it's time to find out now who's going to be crowned albany champ on monster truck challenge will it be fred schaefer fred was the third fastest qualifier and went on to beat gravedigger and carolina crusher in the first two rounds if the champion is not schaefer it'll be jackie wilman 
who piloted Torres to the fifth fastest qualifying time and victories over two giants in the sport, Bigfoot in the first round and Gravedigger in the semis. Without further ado, let's go trackside to Joe Lowe. The crowd is on their feet as they stand for our monster smash final in Albany. And what two trucks they are. Two Chevys, Barefoot, and Taurus. We have been here before with these two bad boys. Jim Clark standing by with Fred Schaefer. I look forward to probably a photo finish. I think it's going to be real close. Okay, you're going to be pulling uh, what lane, and uh, are you glad about that or what? I think I'm going to stay in this lane. I got lane choice. I got a faster qualifying time than he does, so I'm going to stay in the same lane. So Fred Schaefer at a pontoon beach, Illinois, is set to go against the world champion Jackie Wellman and Taurus. And they each apparently have the lane they love. Jackie Wellman is sitting in the cab of the truck as Jim Clark catches up with him right before this run. It's one of the toughest contenders, and uh, I'm just going to give it my best shot and see if I can get him on the light. Any special strategy you're going to be using on this next run? No, I'm just going to try to get the best takeoff, and uh, my truck ain't running up to par. just don't feel like it's running as well as it could. I'm just going to give it my best shot. Jack Wellman, Jr., Granite City, Illinois, the home for Taurus. The trucks are set. The crowd is set. It's showtime. And a big win for Taurus. Oh, look out, Jackie. Jackie Wellman goes out of bounds. That's going to cost him points, according to the U.S. Hot Rod Association rules. But what happened to Barefoot? Fred Schaefer looked great off the line. He hit the ramp, and that was all she wrote. Jackie Wellman, meanwhile, may have come a little bit too far to the left. He approaches that ramp as he did earlier, but this time you can see he's off to the side. He's in the air. There's nothing he can do here. He stays on track, takes out the finish line pole, and then heads to the right and the side of the arena as he leaves and goes out of bounds. That cost him the points there. This is a shot where you can see Fred Schaefer looking. Boom, like he has problems right there. The truck does not launch. Matter of fact, if you look, you can see some smoke coming out of there, but he does have some problems. And our own Jim Clark is standing by with Fred Schaefer. Let's go to him and see if we can get an explanation. Fred, there's a big hole in the bell housing. What happened? Well, the uh, looks like the slipper clutch exploded, and uh, this is why we have safety equipment and safety rules. The shield here is what protects you, and it's a good thing it was in there because uh, you can see that how it stretched this out here, this, this whole two or three inches right here has all been stretched about this far. And if it wasn't for that shield right there, they'd be parts through the dashboard and everything. It's what protects the driver and the legs and uh, the spectators also. It's a good thing it was in there. Thank God for safety equipment. Mr. Wilman's wild ride takes out the finish line, Paul. You can see him steering. He's lucky to keep this truck in the arena. The win goes to Jackie Wellman and Taurus. Jim Clark's with them. Well, I'm glad to, to beat the barefoot truck, but uh, taking my points away didn't help me, so I kind of defeated the purpose. So what's that do for uh, the standings now for you? Well, Equalizer is on my back door by just like 14 points, and I advanced some points on him, so I still come out uh, on the good side tonight. Tell you what, the fans at Albany got their money's worth as the six best monster trucks in the world put on quite a show. Hey, our show continues in just a moment.